So, here we are again. We are filming our sixth episode of Easy as Refined Dining. Now, we wanted to do something a little bit different this time around. So, you know, we've been getting a lot of feedback as, you know, we just started our channel five episodes ago. And one of the things that we've had a lot of folks asking for is a little bit more time spent with each preparation. Um, and, you know, and I agree. I think before we were trying to find a way to, you know, squeeze an hour-long video into 25 minutes to kind of give you guys a full experience but I think what we're gonna do this time around is I'm going to split the video up into two parts so this video is called between two brines um, and in this video I want to show folks how to properly use a wet brine and a dry brine for seafood um, so we're also doing a catch clean cook for bonnet head shark and remora which are absolutely amazing bonnet head shark may be one of the most amazing fish I've ever eaten uh, if you like king crab, then you're going to love this recipe for bond head. Um, with that being said, part one is going to be how we uh, process the fish, how we prepare the brines in detail. So I go through a lot more information. It's a little bit slower, more informative. This is more of like a, a chef training class, if you will. And then the second video is going to be the preparation on the grill. So we're going to be going out to a local beach park. Um, and we're going to use one of the grills and just show how we cook over open fire and you know it's a really fun video there's a lot of beautiful imagery we had a lot of fun we met some unique characters while we were out and about so I hope you guys enjoy this uh, next video again we're gonna split it in two parts so watch the first part for the information you know to uh, get the recipes and you know the information down and then the second part will be the cooking so I look forward to having you guys check both of those out don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Make, you know, leave some comments. Let us know what you would like to see. Um, let us know if there's something you would like to make us to make some adjustments for. Um, you know, we have some awesome fishing shirts coming out and cutting boards coming out, and um, we've got some uh, plating spoon kits. So you guys can see how we do more of a high-end plating. This video, we're not going to be super uh, in depth on some really high-end plating, but we will for the episode seven. Um, so, but in the meantime. Um, let's get you know to the preparation table and let's uh, see these uh, this you know this fish. discussed earlier um, we're doing the two brines so this is the first of the two brines this is our wet brine so this is what we're going to be using the shark in uh, it's a tougher meat a little bit gamier so I like to use a wet brine for you know, your hardier uh, denser uh, fish meats so in this case you know you can kind of do whatever you want with brines but for me it's you know I love the recipe that I'm about to give you guys what's really important though is your salt to water ratios so with that said let's start with the water we're gonna begin with eight cups so each one of these pints is two cups after we have our eight cups of water we need exactly one-third 
cup of salt. So for a fish fry, unlike a chicken fry, it's a third of a cup to your eight cups. So your balance is important. It ends up being roughly 8%, 7.8%. So we're gonna go ahead and do a third of a cup. So what's nice about these measuring cups that I like is in addition to being a two-thirds cup cup, it also has various segmentations, which makes it a lot easier for you know measuring your salts and spices at home. I want to go ahead and get my salt melted into the water before I start adding the rest. That's why the water that I pour into my brine begins warm, and by the time I'm done with it, it should be room temperature. All right, so next, I'm gonna add my sugar, because I want a sweet and salty balance, but in this case, I'm only gonna use half a cup. So again, multi-level measuring cup, half a cup right here. Now I want to be precise with my measurements, so don't spare out on that. And just like I would my salt, I want to make sure that I break down my salt and my sugar. When I put it in my shark, I don't want to have any disbalance in salt to sugar to water ratio. So next, I want to add some oyster sauce. Now, I personally like getting an authentic mushroom oyster. And in my recipe, I like to use two tablespoons. Like everything else, I blend it together. I want to make sure all my flavor profiles are as even as possible. No residuals hanging out at the bottom of my brine. Get that nice caramel color. All right. Next, I require half a tablespoon of cashmere chili powder. Now for those of you that don't know where to find cashmere chili powder, just find your local Southeast Asian marketplace and uh, they should usually have as a staple in Southeast Asian food. Nice bright red, great flavor for brown, a little spicy. All right, next is one teaspoon of peppercorn medley. So what I use for my medley is a standard melange that you would buy from a grocery store and a little bit of green Szechuan peppercorn. And I mix them together, I toast them up in a saute pan like you've seen me do in my previous videos. Check out our few others if you'd like to see how that's done. Just toasting peppercorns until you start to hear it pop just a little bit. All that oil comes out and you get all that flavor. Um, and then grind that down, pistol and mortar. I use a nice granite one, heavy weight, breaks it down real quick. And then we go from there. So in this case, we're gonna use exactly one teaspoon. All right. I can already start to smell all the flavors that are breaking down in this brine. And what's great is I can picture the way my shark meat is going to taste once it's been sitting in this. Now, once I get my shark meat uh, processed here in a little bit, it's going to need at least 8 hours, but no more than 10 hours in this brine. Alright, so let's get the next ingredient in my brine. Alright, so next, I'm going to get 2 tablespoons of minced garlic. Now, you can mince your own garlic, but I actually prefer to get the pre-minced garlic in this circumstance because it's already been macerating. Um, in its own juices for a while, so in this case it actually uh, is preferable to crushing and mincing your own. So two tablespoons. Alright, and last but not least, 
one tablespoon of dried parsley. Give it a little bit of extra green flavor. Balance is important in everything you make at all times. All right, give it one final mix. Make sure everything is set as best as we need it to. Now, I'm about to start preparing my fish. So with that being said, this is gonna have about 30 minutes to hang out and unify in flavor. And that's what we want. So I'm gonna set this aside, let it come to room temperature, make sure that water kind of cools down a little bit before I go ahead and throw my fish in. We'll see you guys at the processing table. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and process our bonnethead shark. Now I already showed you guys a video before how I processed it in preparation for this. Uh, Any time that I am going to vacuum seal and freeze shark, um, I'm going to dispatch it and bleed it at the site of the catch to make sure that um, I don't have any like profound negative flavors. Uh, the, a shark, much like a stingray, um, urinate and expel um, bacteria through their skin. So that said, upon catching, they need to be dispatched and then bled out on site. And then later, I remove the fins, the head, the tail, and then I complete the cleaning of the insert, which I showed you in a previous video. So now, we're preparing it for our brine. So I'm going to remove the skin, and then I'm going to place it in the brine prior to slicing it into steaks. I'll slice into steaks once it's been brined. So with that said, it's a lot easier to skin small pieces than it is large pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and break this down into four pieces and that will make it a lot easier for me to brine. So again, I'm using my Yasha knife. And the best part about a Santoko knife is that it has multiple functions. It's kind of like the use it for everything knife. Now, a bonnet head shark has a little bit of bloodline close to the entire skin. So with that said, I want to leave a little bit of skin on the meat as I clean it, just so I don't get that bloodline. A lot of your more oceanic or foul flavors come from that bloodline. So, naturally, of course, this takes a little bit of practice to become really good at it, but essentially, as you'll notice, it will roll right off that skin. And that's what we want. See that? Just like that. All right, so as you can see, we're left with really nice, clean quarter of meat. It smells nice and fresh. You can tell it's right out of the ocean. So now I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the rest of these. So we're gonna kind of speed on through this portion through the video. Um, but if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comment and I've got no problem uh, answering those as we go. So, now that I've cleaned the skin off my pieces, I want to make sure I remove any remaining bloodline. So, it's, this is the easiest part of the whole cleaning process. Just anything red, remove. And if you smell it, you'll even notice that it has a different aroma than the rest of the meat. And that goes with any fish. All right, so now that we have our 
uh, shark all set up and are quartered, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the brine. Phil, will you go ahead and hand me that brine, please? Thank you. All right, so just take each quarter to make sure it's fully submerged. And this is going to sit in this wet brine for eight hours. This is going to give it about a 70% cure. All right, lots of remora. All right, so next we're going to create our dry brine. So remember, the video is between two brines. So the idea of that is to understand the brining of seafood. Because a lot of folks don't understand the proper way to you know, brine seafood and the different ways that you can do so. So we've already created our wet brine. We're getting our shark prepared here shortly for that. But now let's do our dry brine that we're going to do for the remora. Um, and I'll talk more about the remora here in a little bit when you see me process it. Uh, but for now, uh, the, the idea is similar though. We want to create high salt content, create a semi-cure. Um, the mix that we make here is going to be on the remora for again eight hours and just like the wet brine, we're going to rinse it once we're, once we're done. So um, let's start with the ingredients. Now again, this is a, this is a uh, recipe that works really well for me. Now do whatever you want. Um, play with it if you want to, but this is a super high-end, great flavor profile uh, mixture. So I'm going to start with black cumin seeds. Now, there is a significant difference between black cumin seed and cumin seed. Just like black cardamom versus cardamom have completely different flavor profiles. So, I've already went ahead and measured out my tablespoon and a half of black cumin seed. I've already toasted it and now I'm going to grind it in my pistol and mortar. Something that I feel is really important in every household. When you have these nice granite uh, pistol and mortars, you really don't have to do much outside of just add just a touch of pressure and let the weight of the pistol grind it for you. And when you're doing so, you're going to get every bit of the aroma that that spice has to offer. Now, in the case of the black cumin seed, I don't want to make it too fine. I want it to leave it just a little bit chopped up. And what that's going to do is give me a little bit of uh, varying flavor. Because if you make it super ground down, then you add a lot of surface area. The more surface area you have in that powder, the more flavor you impart. So I like a mixed grind, which allows exactly the amount of flavor that I'm looking for. If you grind it down too much and you use you know, the same table and a half, that I'm using, you're going to actually have more flavor and you're like, oh, why is it so, per you know, perfume-like? Why was it so uh, floral? And it's because you overground your black, your black cumin seed. So if you look here, and I'll go ahead and show you, it's a mix. I tell you what, a silicone uh, spatula is a chef's best friend. All right, so next, three quarters of a cup of kosher salt. brown sugar. This should be lightly packed. So as you can see, half a cup, lightly packed. Again, flavor variant, sweet versus salty. Alright, so next, sugar in the raw. Now there's a common misconception between brown sugar and sugar in the raw. In America, no, brown sugar is a very fine um, caramelized style of sugar, um, whereas in many other countries, especially in South America and the Caribbean islands, brown sugar is a sugar that is literally colored brown. In America, we call that sugar in a raw. So, in this case, I need the Americanized caramelized brown sugar, as well as half a cup of sugar in a raw. Large, sweet, raw sugar.
So these variances of sugars are going to create a lot of flavor. All right, next, one tablespoon peppercorn medley. I already explained to everybody how I do my peppercorn medley. And again, these are whole corns that I've toasted and ground in that same pistol and mortar to create the proper flavor profile. Next, one teaspoon of Hungarian hot smoked paprika. Now this is not your standard paprika. There are so many different variant uh, paprikas out there. The Italians use more of an agate dolce, a sweet and sour. Americans love the standard paprika, which is more of a, a, a dry red flavor. And then uh, there is a variant of Hungarian, which is hot smoked. It's a spicier pimento, so with a different peppercorn, uh, with that nice smoky flavor, but it's gonna work really well with this rub. So this, I'm going to go ahead and pour over top of my spice rope. In the event that I have any air in spice, I don't want to lose this. This is a little bit more difficult to get by, but we can all get it. All right. Now, just mix it all up. Again, just like the liquid, the wet brine, we want to make sure that our spice mix is as balanced as it possibly can be, because this isn't just like seasoning, um, you know, your standard fish or any protein. Really, you're going to be coating, heavily coating your fish in this, and it's going to create again a brine. It's going to create a semi cure. So by the time we take this off in the morning and we rinse all the spice and the salt and sugar off of the fish, we've already imparted a ton of flavor. So it's only going to take moments on the grill to cook through and it's going to peel off a little bit thicker and denser because we're going to remove a lot of the moisture from the fish and we're going to impart flavor instead. So just like you do a smoked salmon, for example. Uh, so make sure that your spice mix is nice, well balanced. Nothing you don't want you don't want part of your mix to be heavy and sugar over here and heavy and over there and heavy and salt in the middle. Nice balance. Take your time, and we'll see you the processing table when we put our, this all over our. Floor. All right. So next is our remora. Now. I'm not sure how many folks are familiar with a remora fish, but essentially this is the fish that attaches itself to the shark and that's how it travels about and gains its meal. So essentially, you know, a shark will tear up some food and the remora will be clung to it and, you know, eat whatever kind of leftovers are floating in the water after the shark has finished its meal. But needless to say, a carnivore none the least, this is a super underappreciated fish. Um, and you know, we're really lucky to have it. And it's kind of a cool, you know, variation of brines. We're gonna do the dry brine with this one. Um, so it's we got the shark and then we have the fish that only lives because the shark gives it the opportunity. Alright, so in this circumstance, we're going to cut from the lower jaw around the pectoral fin and then we're going to peel the skin back and so I'm going to show you guys a little picture real quick of exactly how these suction cups work because you can't hear from here I don't think but these are all structured to stick directly onto that shark and uh, while we went ahead and we fished this off the sunny Isles when we got back from the east the west coast uh, we went ahead and we stuck this bad boy to the boat just so you can kind of see the way this upper lid functions. So take a look at that now. When you come back, let's start processing this fish. Alright, so now that you're back, uh, you can kind of see 
the way it's still wanting to adhere a little bit, but naturally now that it's no longer uh, given of life, uh, it's not functioning. So we're gonna go ahead and hold it down and process our fish. So, what I like to do with this fish is it has its anal porpoise here. I create a thin slice that runs down the gills on both sides. That way, crack the neck, and I'm gonna break it and then pull it all out at once. Now I'm not gonna show that on camera, but that's how I clean. All right, so now that we've dispatched it, we're going to skin it. Because what we would like is we want the skin to remain on the bones for the dry burn. So, starting from the spine, usually you would cut around it, but in this case, you know, we start from the spine and we're cautious of where we are in the skin. Now this is going to take a moment, so instead of forcing you to sit here and watch me peel this whole skin, we're going to do one of those fast forwards in the video where you kind of see me do it just at quick expense we should say. So we'll see you in So now that I have peeled it all the way back on each side, I'm going to go ahead and use my guitar. Love these guys, the cleaver is so phenomenal. Um, and I'm going to chop it off right about here. And now I have a beautiful piece of fish that I'm going to put a dry brine on. And then that's going to sit and cure for the exact same amount of time as my wet brine. Alright, so let's go ahead and grab the dry brine that we just made earlier. And again, we want to completely cover this. This is going to cure overnight. So, Phil, if you would, hand me some aluminum foil. Thank you. All right, so I want to completely cover the aluminum foil over the fish. Throw a little extra on there. Again, we're trying to encase it in salt. So what I like to do is roll one side like this, fold, fold, roll, done. Again, tomorrow, just like we did with the wet brine, we're going to remove this from our brine, our dry brine. We're going to give it a really good rinse, we don't want to have too much salt outdoor before we throw it on the grill.